Hello, Tar Heel Nation. Welcome to another episode of UNC Hoops Talk. Uh, we got, we're going to jump into recruiting this month. And uh, to, to help us along with that, I got somebody that follows and knows a lot more about the Tar Heel recruiting process and, and recruits uh, than I do. And so helping me out this, this month, as he does about this time every year, it seems like, is, is Ross Martin. Ross covers uh, Carolina football, basketball, recruiting for carolinablue.com, which is of uh, 24-7 sports. Uh, Ross, anything I missed in there, of, of what you cover and what you do? Yeah, just football, basketball, and basketball and football recruiting, and um, part of the CBS family now. So 24-7 uh, sports uh, and, and CBS sports. All right, and moving up in the world. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're, we're right. going to – oh, go ahead. No, yeah, trying to move up in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I know you're plenty busy because I see all those articles that you pump out. So um, we're going to jump right in here. We're talking recruiting this, this month, this episode. Uh, but before we even get into recruiting, uh, we know – everybody knows we lost Marcus Page and, and Bryce Johnson along with Joel James. Uh, so, Ross, uh, just amongst the players returning, who do you kind of see stepping up into, you know, the leadership role that we lose with, with both guys, but especially Marcus, and then obviously the production that Bryce gave us last year? Who, who fills those gaps for us? Yeah, I think you have to look at Joel Berry taking a bigger role uh, as the point guard now playing without Marcus Page. He's going to be the guy. And you kind of saw what he could do last year. I mean, I thought he, was, he played better than Marcus Page did more consistently a little bit better three-point shooter. Um, I, mean, he, I mean, he was really impressive the last half of the season, especially in the ACC tournament, and then had some big games as well in the NCAA tournament. Look for him to be the guy. Um, you know, he can do everything in terms of what you want out of a point guard, score, pass, defend. Also going to be a leader as a junior now. Um, and just the starters. I mean, Hicks is going to have to be a big-time player. He's going to have to watch his foul trouble. But I think Roy Williams is really handicapped um, – Isaiah Hicks, he, he's kind of held him back the last three years, not played him as much. And we saw what he could do last year as an explosive, powerful, athletic, power forward who can, uh, you know, kind of kind of take control in the paint and do a lot of things in terms of uh, driving with the ball and then his jump out of the gym leaping ability is big for rebounding and obviously dunking and things like that. Um, you know, Kenny Meeks going to have to step up as well. There's a lot of scoring to make up for with Bryce Johnson out. I think we know what Meeks is. I don't think we can expect him to be some 15-point, 10-rebound guy. I think you're going to see about 10 points, you know, six, seven rebounds. But you need that consistency because he's going to be a starter. He's going to have to play, you know, 20 to, to 30 minutes a game alongside Hicks because um, there's not much behind them. And then Justin Jackson is going to have to step into a leadership role and really show what he can do offensively. He's going to have more shots, more opportunities to score from deep. And I think he's shown flashes of what he can do in some big 20-point games. But, again, that shooting consistency hasn't been there. And you want him to be the superstar. You want him to be the, the, the 16 to 18-point game, a guy who can, uh, who can knock down three or four threes a game. And um, in an ideal world, you know, those four players step up and, and UNC doesn't miss a beat. They did lose two big-time scorers and big-time leaders in Bryce Johnson and Marcus Page. And then Theo Pinson's going to have to step in and, and be kind of do what he's been doing, but just at a higher level with more minutes. And so, obviously, you know, you name uh, a lot of returning players. And, and, and kind of, you know, how I feel, too, is it's not one person stepping up, you know, maybe as much as Bryce did last year, but it's everybody's got to be more consistent is a word I heard you say a lot. And then, you know, just step up the production as well. Yeah, I mean, and I think they're ready to do that. Um, these guys have played, you know, these guys have all been starters. Hicks has started some games. Meeks has started as a freshman, sophomore, and, and uh, junior. And then, um, you know, Jackson and Barry and Pinson have all played a lot. So it, it's not like Roy is asking a lot of these players to step in. It's kind of the general progression of what you expect when you come to Carolina. You contribute as a freshman, sophomore, and then you become a star as a junior and senior. And, take that next jump and that's what um we expect from these guys and i think all of them are capable of doing that um even Me meeks who str struggled especially last year still showed flashes of what he can do um in the ncaa, NCAA tournament which was big so right 
And so those are all upperclassmen uh, that you mentioned there. You know, obviously we have Kenny Williams, Luke May coming back, and hopefully they make a nice uh, jump from freshman to sophomore year. But let's concentrate now on the incoming freshmen. We've got Brandon Robinson on the wing. We've got Tony Bradley adding some depth down low and uh, Seventh Woods to the guard position. What do you expect, uh, or what can we as, as Tar Heel Nation expect from these guys their freshman year? Yeah, Tony Bradley is the one name that is is huge because he is going to be the backup center. He's going to come in as the first big man off the bench, and um, Ewens is going to have to count on him to produce. Um, you know, if, if Hicks or Meeks picks up two fouls early, it's going to be Tony Bradley who's going to be that that starting – I put starting in quotation marks – starting uh, big man. You know, he's a 6'10 guy. I think he became a fifth uh, five-star player at the very end of his – prep career um he's not super athletic but he's consistent he is uh, very fundamentally sound he's a good player um and that's the guy that's gonna have to be counted on the most and um i mean what he does and what he does early is going to be uh, play a big role in what UNC can do this season if he can't come in and perform then UNC is going to struggle there is no uh way around it so that's a lot of pressure on him and I mean, Luke May will play some too as a, as a power forward, but he's limited um, with his size and his athleticism. And you can see he played some last year, but he just wasn't very effective offensively. Uh, beyond uh, Tony Bradley is Seventh Woods, very dynamic, explosive uh, combo guard. You can see him being kind of a backup point guard and also uh, playing alongside Joel Berry and Theo Pinson and then Brandon Robinson who is uh, 6'5", you know, 170, very skinny, long, lean shooter. Um, but UNC is stacked at the at the guard and combo guard position. You know, you look at Brandon Rob- um, yeah, Brand Robinson. He's going to be playing behind Jackson and Pinson and Kenny Williams. So I don't really know how much he's going to play. And, you know, you don't really know until you see these guys out there and how they how they mix in and, and, and where they're going to be needed. But I don't see Seventh Woods or Brandon Robinson playing too much unless they're just – they come in and, and you know, they supplant uh, somebody like Nate Britt or Theo Pinson or Kenny Williams who's who've been in the program for a couple of years now. Right. So – and it sounds, you know, again, uh, like you're saying, Tony Bradley is probably what we can expect the most of it more because of necessity. You know, we didn't – just until you – just there said Nate Britt, we haven't even brought him up as a senior guard, you know, to bring leadership and stuff. Um, Long term, out of these three, who who makes the biggest impact on the program? Um, yeah, probably Bradley. I mean, I think Bradley is the highest rated player, and I think he's going to be a four year player. Uh, I mean, Seventh Woods is, is good too. Um, and he just, had a lot of hype, you know, a couple years ago. Yeah, I mean, Seventh Woods is the biggest name because he. He burst on the scene as a freshman with that dunk, and he's kind of been around. You know, he's been recruited for four or five years, but he's six two. Um, you know, I don't know. I think Bradley is going to be a guy that's going to be a very good player. You could, this guy could be a you know first team All ACC guy as a junior and se- junior and uh, senior, kind of like a Bryce Johnson. You start off pretty raw, and then they come to your own. And when you play four years in college, you're, you're going to get good. So that's what I would say. All right, so we we obviously have a lot of depth. Uh, a lot of people we can turn to this year as long as we have the consistency. You know, we should have another top 10 season. Uh, it should be really exciting. But let's, because it is the off season, we get a little chance. So let's look at recruiting a little bit. And, and this is, uh, you know, a, an area where you blow me away with your coverage uh, and your knowledge about it uh, much more than, than I follow or could even um, keep everybody straight. So Let's first take a look at next year. I, I've, I, I believe it was you that I saw an article written that this is uh, Roy Williams' most important recruiting class, the class of two, 2017. Uh, we have Jalik Felton already signed. We just recently signed, I think it was Andrew Platic, if that's how yeah, you say it. I think it's Platic. Platic. Yeah. Uh, so, so just go through. Um, you know, I think people have probably seen the highlight tapes, uh, kind of know what they expect from Felton at least. Uh, you know, tell us a little about Playdick, and then who else are we looking? Who are we going to get? Who's at least a, a likely candidate, or who do we need? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, and, and you're right. And I wrote that article about how um, the 2017 class is so important. I just want to go back and talk about that because of what UNC loses. They lose uh, Meeks, Hicks, and Britt for sure. They could lose Jackson and Pinson, or sorry, Jackson and um, Barry. Barry to the NBA. 
and they also undersigned last year. So they could have taken four or five last year. They only got three. So it opens up more scholarships. I mean, so they could sign a class of anywhere between four to six guys. You know, it's a huge class. Um, and that's why it's so important because if all those guys leave, I mean, there's not much left. You're going to have to have guys who can step in automatically and play. You know, these one-and-done guys, these five-star studs who can come in and be automatic contributors. And so that's a – I mean, it's, it sucks that UNC is going to have to – going to have those gaps. What it does is it allows Roy Williams and staff to kind of sell playing time. And that's a huge allure to some of these five-star guys. So uh, so they have, yeah, they have uh, Andrew Playtick signed or committed, and they have Julie Felton committed. Uh, Playtick is ranked pretty low. Uh, he's I think we have him 205 in our 24-7 sports composite rankings, meaning he's the 205th best player in the 2017 class, which I've never seen UNC have a commitment from a player that low. Uh, but Roy Williams likes him, and you, I trust uh, guys who've been coaching basketball ball for you know 10 20 years over guys who whose job is to rank players and scout them so playtick is a 6'4 shooter Roy liked his toughness um he's out of upstate new york that area um you know he's a pure shooter who who's kind of limited athletically and what he can do other than in the shoot the game obviously he's gonna get better um but that's what he is he's a shooter um and that's what unc likes to have you never gonna have too many shooters uh with Jaleek Felton, you have more of a combo guard who can get into the lane and score, more of a distributor who, who is uh, not as good of a shooter but can score in a variety of ways. You do have two kind of guards, uh, not pure point guards, but, but combo and shooting guards who complement each other um, in the way they play offensively, and that's what UNC has signed now. And then you look at who they're going after. I think they, they need two to three big men, and the big name there is Muhammad Bamba. Five-star guy, top five player um, who has all the offers. You know, Kentucky's on him, Duke's on him, UNC's on him. You know, he speaks highly of UNC, but he's yet to visit. That's a name to watch. I mean, if UNC gets a guy like that, I mean, that's a huge addition. That's the kind of guys that UNC used to get back when uh, they were recruiting in 2006 and, and 2010, 2011 with those studs. Another name that I think UNC has a good chance of landing is P.J. Washington. He's a 6'7 power forward, so a little undersized, but a five-star player, you know, a top 25 talent. He's already been to UNC and has said that UNC is going to get an official visit. When you look at recruiting, um, you know, these players can have UNC in their top group as much as they want, but unless they visit, I don't really take much stock in how much they're truly interested in it. So the fact that P.J. Washington and his father visit UNC on their own dime meaning it's an unofficial visit that they came it's on their own, paid for everything themselves, is, is significant. And when you see that, uh, us in the business take notice and say, okay, this, this recruitment is serious. So P.J. Washington is a player I think UNC has a great chance of landing, and that would be a huge, take, uh, huge player as well. Very talented, very tough, big, strong, ready to come in and play. He can score. He can he can take the ball a little bit outside, but also scores inside. So it'll be a really good player there for UNC. Um, there's a couple other big men names: uh, Wendell Carter, um, who UNC hasn't gained much traction with, and then Kevin Knox is a small forward. You probably heard his name. Um, six eight guy, kind of reminds you of what Justin Jackson can do. One of the top ten players in the nation, but you know has all the different offers as well. Um, He's been to UNC a couple of times. He's been to Duke a couple of times. That's a name to look for as well, Kevin Knox. And then I think UNC is going after a point guard in this class after not signing one in 2006, 2016, and 2015. Two names there are Nick Weatherspoon, who has a UNC offer and has shown interest and talked about visiting UNC. And then Colin Sexton, who hasn't been offered yet, but he's another five-star player. UNC has shown interest in. And then there's tons of other names, but UNC doesn't offer many guys. And when these guys start falling off, UNC will start offering some more players. Um, but, of course, they have guys on their radar that they're interested in. And as offers come out, you see where the interest is. So so take us through a little bit. When uh, when can we see or look to see some of these guys, you know, really get up, you know, get down to their list of, you know, three, top two, whatever, and start committing? Or at what point do we need to be worried about, 
you know, are we going to get the class that we need in 2017? Yeah. So a lot of the official visits will happen in the fall. That's when a lot of these players like to do it. Um, and there's to the a football, football game signing. Say it again. To the football games, right? Yeah, they come for a weekend, and it's usually a football game. And you see them with the players walking on the field and stuff, um, and you get a good full college experience with that. So a lot of these players will do fall official visits, and I mean that's the best chance for UNC, UNC to sell the program. They usually practice with the team. You know, they come for late night with Roy, which usually falls on a home football game in mid October, mid to late October. That's a big a big weekend. So that's when you kind of see it getting more serious. When you see official visits, that's when you know there's interest. You know, they go on four or five official visits. Those are probably their four or five, you know, biggest uh, the teams that are in contention. So, you know, a lot of these guys will make November to December decisions. Uh, there's a fall signing period where the players can commit and sign in the fall. Uh, all three of UNC's commits and signees from last year. Uh, were were fall signees, and there's also a spring signing period. Um, so I mean, these commit these these agreements can last up until June or July of next year. But usually, these players like to get it done before their before or during their basketball season. So November, December. But I mean, don't be surprised if this lasts until you know March, April, May, June. When that you can tell who is staying and who is going from the teams. You know kind of scholarship count. You know, whether Justin Jackson leaves or Joel Berry leaves would determine how many players UNC could take. So, you know, maybe they sign, they sign two or three or four in November, but then they open more scholarships up in April and May, and they can take, you know, two or three more guys depending on the numbers. So if it all doesn't happen before Christmas, we don't need to throw out all the Fire Roy tweets and <laughs> – and all, the, all that yeah, stuff, I mean, right? Yeah, and this, I mean, this class is so important. Um, you know, Roy's probably going to be coaching for four or five, six more years, you know, and, and this is kind of a, a, kind of a turning point. You know, he's, a lot of his players will be gone, and, and it's kind of the last kind of hurrah for to sign a big class. It's going to be his guys for the next four years, you know, that kind of generation of players. So he's got to get some horses in the barn this, with this class. Uh, some solid four and five star guys who contribute immediately. All right, so that you know, covers a lot of 2017, uh, and and beyond that, obviously it affects or it can be affected by who leaves, who stays, you know, who we sign in in that class as well. But looking to 2018, 2019, um, I know I saw again another article you, uh, that Roy just offered a a top recruit out of Minnesota for I think 2019 class. Who? What are some of the big names right right now we're already looking at for 2018-19? Yeah, in uh in eighteen, there's uh hey, let me pull up. So, oh, yeah, we already have one signed for 2018, right? A point yeah, guard. The big, the big name for eighteen. Uh, I always just look at offer lists. I mean, there's so many names out there that they're watching that I don't have enough time to pay attention to all the interests. I, I pay attention to the offers. So uh, the big name is uh, Rayshon Black. His nickname is Leaky, and uh, he's out of Concord, North Carolina. He's actually going to a prep school uh, in Florida for his next two years. He's a 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six point guard, which is, a, which is a big get. And once you get that point guard in, you know, that, that is attractive to players to sh see who's going to be, you know, giving them the ball, what kind of ball handler they have. So that was a big get. In-state guy from Charlotte uh, with great size, you know, um, a 6'5", six, 6'7", six, point guard. Those are hard to find. And then a couple of guys that have offers is Devin Dotson, another point guard out of Charlotte, a recent offer, Zion Williamson out of uh, South Carolina, five-star stud, top 10 player who UNC has some traction with. He has tons of offers as well. I know Duke's in his recruitment. Um, that's a guy to watch. Recently, he was offered on Monday night. Uh, Jairus Hamilton, or Jairus Hamilton, I'm not sure I'm saying that right. He's at North Carolina as well. He's been to a bunch of games already, 6'8", small forward. So, yeah, these in-state guys that, that UNC is, is offering and, and getting some traction with. And another guard UNC offered on Monday is Kobe White out of uh, Wilson, North Carolina. Not as highly ranked, uh, four-star guy, but, you know, UNC offered obviously shows some interest there. And no big men have been offered yet uh, in the 2018 class. And I expect a couple more of those offers to come out this uh this month and into august as unc evaluates who they want to go after in that class 
So um, obviously they're they're looking to sign another point guard alongside alongside Black and, and get some studs there as well. So in, and you talk about all these guards that uh, are being offered and the top of the class and stuff. And even you know for this next class, you say we still need a couple of bigs. Is that a trend just with North Carolina that Roy, you know, after Kendall Marshall's injury, you know, just wants to have a surplus of point guards? I mean, we see it already on the team now. Is it just uh, the culture of basketball going to kind of the small, the small game, uh, small lineups where the big guys, you know, play kind of wherever? Uh, wh- what do you contribute that to? Is it just kind of how the classes line up? Yeah, I mean, I think it goes back to the Kendall Marshall deal where, where Roy didn't have enough point guards. Because he's always since then he's always looked to sign you know at least one or you know one every at least one every class and not just two in a class you have Paige Barry and Britt on the same team and then this coming up year you have Barry Britt and 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 uh, Seventh Woods who can play guard so I think he likes to have three scholarship players who can handle the ball and be a point guard in case of injury and that um, that's where he's done since uh, since then and yeah I mean I think Roy likes the balance. He likes having big men. He legitimately likes to have two guys above 6'8", six, 6'9", six, who can score inside and foul out the other team. But you are seeing a trend among players of big guys who can play multi-positions and aren't just a center. You know, they're a, they're a, a sort of spread four or a power four to come out and shoot the three. And you see more diverse styles of big men. But Roy's always going to look to recruit um, traditional big men. But you're seeing less – traditional big men that exist. Uh, Harry Giles, he committed to Duke, is a guy who can kind of play all over the court, but he's still 6'9", six, 6'10". Six, so you're seeing a lot more players who can um, who aren't just back-to-your-basket players like UNC fans are used to seeing. And can we ever expect uh, Roy to get as into the one-and-done as you know Duke has now, Kentucky? Is that ever going to be a trend in North Carolina basketball? Why I mean, Roy's I there? Not. I think he's trying to. I don't think it's any lack of effort. People ask him that, but he goes after these big guys. They just don't commit. And I don't know why. I don't know if because, I mean, Cal and Kay are doing it. Maybe because of uh, USA Basketball with Coach K and Cal Parr just got things rolling with the one and done, being that kind of one and done coach. But I don't think it's anything Roy is doing in particular. I think it's just how basketball recruiting has trended recently. And because he went after, he went after Giles, went after Tatum. Went after uh, Dennis Smith. He goes after his top 10 guys, but when they don't pick UNC, you have to step back and take the the top 40 guys that are going to stay three or four years. And, you know, that um, Marcus Page's class with Bryce Johnston and, um, and Tokido and uh, Joel James in that class took him to a Final Four. So you kind of see the payoff long term of stepping back and recruiting guys, maybe not as talented incoming as a freshman but who um, over, over four years can develop, become studs, and lead your team deep to the tournament. So it's kind of a, um, a switch off whether you want that instant contribution or build your program and build your players over three or four years. And, and, well, and when you're stacking your roster with three or four year guys, you don't get as many chances to do the one and done because you know they're committed to scholarships, correct? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of... Um, you know, when you, when you start doing one and done, there's always going to be scholarships open after those guys bounce. That's what Kata, I mean, Cal Perry does. You know, he gets five or six five stars in, and the next year they're gone. So he gets five or more. And this year, I mean, UNC is going to have scholarships, so they should be able to lock in some of these studs who could be one and done's or could be, you know, to your players because there's going to be a lot of minutes available. But Roy always likes seniors, and so the seniors are going to play, and that's going to detract from his ability to land guys who want to come in and be the man. Right. All right, well, that's a lot of names thrown out there. Is there anybody else, any other names that you want to throw out there uh, on the recruiting trail that Tar Heel fans should be watching for, um, you know, be paying attention to it all before we let you go? No, I mean, I think in the 2017 class, just keep an eye on P.J. Washington and Kevin Knox. Brandon Randolph is another guy to look for. He's actually teammates with Muhammad Bamba. Uh, Nick Weatherspoon. I mean, those guys are the guys that UNC could land and, and, and would really be good gets. And when those names start coming off the board is when they have to take a step back and start offering other players. And that's when this class, you know, you start you getting a little scared whether they're going to be able to, to get a, a decent top 10 class when all those top names start coming off. So keep an eye on those guys and um, 
but they already have two guys committed, which is which is never a bad thing. Right. All right. Well, thank you for that, Ross. I, I, I appreciate you coming on here, and, and everybody that listens to this won't know the, the technical difficulties yeah. we went through to, to get this going. Um, but everybody listening, make sure that you go follow Ross on Twitter. It's boss underscore Martin 247, and that's boss with a B, not Ross. Um, boss underscore Martin 247 and then make sure you follow him on carolinablue.com which is of now CBS Sports right yeah still underneath the 24 7 sports umbrella but just under a bigger umbrella of CBS Sports so yeah it's been good appreciate it man all right thanks for coming on and make sure you subscribe to so you don't miss the next month's podcast and as we get rolling into basketball season uh, we ramp it up even more so Stay tuned to UNC Hoops Talk podcast and um, go check out Ross. Until next time, go Heels.